My name is Brianna Wright, and I will be reviewing multi-component chemical imaging of pharmaceutical solid dosage forms with broadband CARS microscopy by the Cicerone Group. This paper was published in Analytical Chemistry in 2013. The overall purpose of this paper is to investigate the capabilities of broadband anti-Stokes Raman scattering on solid-state drugs to see if it's more efficient and, in particular, faster than narrow-spectrum CARS microscopy has, that has been previously used. The drug analyzed in this paper is indomethacin, or IMC, which has three different crystalline forms, gamma, alpha, and delta. However, for the purposes of this study, only the gamma and the alpha form were observed, and the quality of the BCAR system was assessed based on the analysis of this drug. So active pharmaceutical ingredients such as IMC come in different forms in the solid state. This is called polymorphs. You can have amorphous forms and you can have crystal form, crystalline forms. And within that, you can have different crystalline structures. The different forms of drugs have different properties, and these differences can alter the effects that the medicines have on the patients. For example, let's say the most stable form of an API takes longer to break down and get spread throughout the body. That would be great if you had a condition that needed to be acted on over time, but not so much if the API was being used as an ANSID, which decreases inflammation. Someone with a migraine wants it to go away as fast as possible, not over the course of a day. This is why it's important to be able to identify the exact species and polymorph and relative percentage you have of a drug you're trying to deliver. It's also important to be able to distinguish between multiple components because typically the active material in a solid state medicine is only given in a small quantity. It would be rather hard to keep up with, let's say, a 100 milligrams pill. So inactive fillers are used and need to be distinguished from when characterizing important polymorphs. There are characterization methods already used. I have some listed here. The first set are very useful, but they do consume your product and simply don't have strong enough signals all the time to measure minute differences. IR is also an option, but the scanning range is rather small and the resolution isn't great, and some scattering can also be seen. There are linear Raman methods, but again, the resolution for these methods are poor. The best, most widely used option up to this point was nonlinear optical methods, which gave good resolution, but, but compared to the broadband cars, it was still slow and could only detect a small range of spectral signals. This is where broadband comes in. Spectral signals for B cars could be detected in a 3,000 to 8 wave number range, which is much greater than a roughly 300 wave number range that narrowband CARS microscopy has shown. So CARS, which is coherent anti-stoke scattering, works with three beams with different frequencies. The pumps, the pump, the stokes, and the probe beams. In this experiment, the pump and the probe beam were actually the same frequency, and only the Stokes was different. The pump and the Stokes beam come together and hit the sample, creating a coherent medium, and then the probe beam comes in and causes inelast inelastic scattering, which gives the anti-Stokes Raman spectra that we analyze. I found this figure on the right to be a very helpful diagram to show what is occurring when using a CARS microscopy. BCARS is the exact same you can see in this experimental setup from the article, you have a tungsten sapphire source, which gets split into two beams, the pump and the probe beam, which is on top, and the Stokes beam, which is the bottom. The pump gets filtered into a narrow spectrum. The wavelength was centered at 830 nanometers, while the Stokes beam gets passed through a crystal fiber to create the broadband spectrum, which gets collimated by a mirror. These beams still rejoin and hit the sample with a very small resolution spot. And as you can see from this diagram, it gives a back scattering signal. So it's actually detecting what's being reflected back after excitation. And this gets filtered into a spectrograph and gets analyzed by a charge coupled device that was already optimized for the setup. The samples used in this experiment were varying ratios of the gamma and delta polymorphs of the IMC drug. 
these ratios were pre predetermined and known so that they knew the BCAR system was measuring what it was actually supposed to be measuring. And then they ran each sample at different rates to see how fast the BCARs could accurately measure samples. You can see on, on this figure from the paper, um, on the left and right side, you have a signal in green against a black background. The right side acts as a so-called reference, where the BCARS was run at a slow pace, um, to be specific, one second per pixel. And the left had the varying speed, which from top to bottom is 100, 150, and 200 milliseconds per pixel. You can see the images on the left side have more green in the black areas, but still retain the brightest green spots that are seen in the right. The Differences might be better observed in the middle figure, where the red line represents the reference speed and the blue is the increased speed. All the important peaks of interest are present in the blue, but the areas where there should not be peaks have much more noise as compared to the red line. But you can also notice the faster speeds also tend to have a higher intensity in the peaks of interest, meaning they're still discernible from the background noise that is there. It's noted in the paper that speeds faster than 100 milliseconds per, milliseconds per pixel, the spectral lines were not easily detected against the background noise. And this happens to be one of the limitations of the experiment. The chosen experimental design collected backscattering. Cicerone suggests that forward scattering would have been able to give a tenfold faster sampling speed, so 10 milliseconds per pixel. The reason they chose the backscattering geometry wasn't given, but seeing as this is a microprobing experiment, the 90 degree geometry likely would not have yielded strong enough signals for the detectors used. Also, they do point out that if your spectral signals are known a priori and the signal of interest lies within a narrow range, typical CARS microscopy might just be the better option. Also, this paper only looked at one API. Um, you can't be sure that there aren't novel behaviors with broadband um, when looking at less stable APIs, so more investigation would have to be done to ensure that this is a suitable characterization method for a wide range of solid-state pharmaceuticals. The limitations could also be looked at as further applications. Looking at different APIs might be very effective and could produce a database of spectral signals for drugs to use when investigating a narrow signal of interest and you want to use the regular CARS microscopy. BCARS could also be used for any Raman active material with polymorphs that you want to analyze and get ratios of quickly and efficiently. This paper did show that BCARS is significantly faster with a wide range of signal detection while there are some drawbacks in the experimental design and test setup, these drawbacks could be the next avenue of research for the BCARS microscopy characterization method. Thank you all for listening to my presentation. Here are my references, and I look forward to answering your questions.